Alright guys and welcome back to Editor's Life and today we're going to look at how to wipe text or maybe even a logo into frame using either a person or an object in the foreground. So to do this technique you basically have to create and animate a mask on your text or logo layer. And I was going to use something pretty straightforward like a wall with a straight edge with the text hidden behind it. But to demonstrate this technique I've chosen a clip that's a little bit more challenging just in case some of you run into some of the same problems as I did. So here we've got a shot of two people riding a motorbike and the first thing we need to do is either drag in our logo or text. So I'm just going to create some text by hitting T on the keyboard and then typing out text. Then we need to format this, so I'm just going to go to my captions and graphics, bring up essential graphics, and then I'm going to make this a different font. I'm going to make it 220 in size, and I'm going to centralize it using these two buttons just here. Here's where we discover the main challenge with a clip like this. We could mask reveal the text using this bollard in the foreground because you'll notice it does pass all the way through the text, which is ideal for a text reveal. The issue is the bikers in this clip are the focal element of the shot and they are still in the foreground so you don't really want the text covering them up at this point. So say we want the couple on the bike to provide the mask transition instead for the text. The problem we're going to have is they go through the word on the left hand side but they don't wipe it all the way to the right at the beginning of the clip meaning this shot wouldn't really work in its current state. If you're not having this problem and you don't need to learn some workarounds you don't have to watch this next bit. I've put some timestamps in the description so you can skip forward to the masking part of the tutorial. Okay, so some shots just won't be usable for a technique like this, but there are a few things that you can try first. Say you've shot at 4K, but you're editing in a 1080p timeline, and your shot scale down to maybe 50 or 60%. You could always try scaling the shot up a little bit and moving it around, and that way the bikers, in my case, would wipe all the way across the text. This isn't an option for me because the shot itself is 1080p, so I would be scaling above 100% and in that case I would be experiencing some quality loss. Option two would be to reduce the size of the text or the logo. So in our case we could reduce it from maybe 220 down to about 100 and then recenter it. And here you'll see the bikers now also go all the way through the text. This might not be a good option for you because you might need the text or logo to be bigger than this. So that only leaves you with option three. Option three is very similar to option one, but it's for those of you like me that had a 1080p sequence and a 1080p clip. The last option here would be to go to sequence, sequence settings and reduce your 1080p timeline down to 720p. And that'd give you the extra resolution you need to move, again in our case, the bikers, so they do a complete wipe of the text. Hopefully one of these techniques gives you a good workaround. If none are ideal, you might be better off either finding a shot that's appropriate for this technique or perhaps if you do have the option of reshooting, reshoot with the text reveal in mind. Okay, so once you're happy with the shot you've got and you can see the text does pass all the way through your transitional foreground element, the next thing you want to do is click on your text layer, go to your effects controls and under opacity, just click this box and then we'll extend it using these points so you can see the entire word and then just turn your feather down to zero. And then what we want to do is click this little box here that says inverted, and that basically means the text will show up anywhere outside the box, but not inside it. Typically this inverted option works better for masking when it's the subject moving and not the camera. When the camera is moving, for example, with the bollard shot, I found it a lot easier to not invert the mask and to reveal the text inside it, but this is totally up to you. You can try both options and see which one works best for you. Now we've got the mask in and it's inverted, we want to go to the frame right before the text is meant to start appearing. And what we need to do is we need to zoom in, so I'm going to go all the way to 400%. I'm going to go to the edge here. And we need to start drawing a mask around the element that's going to reveal the text, which in our case will be these bikers. You can click anywhere on these lines around the box and you'll see this little pen icon come up. And when you're at a point you can just click and drag and move these around the edge. The faster the reveal is happening, the less accurate you have to be with this, but just try and be as accurate as you can and start drawing a path around your subject. Once you're happy with this, you want to go to the stopwatch on mask path, click that and then go forward one frame using this button here. And then simply keep repeating the process. So we can move this in a little bit and then go forward another frame, 
move it a bit more, go forward another frame. And in our case, we might have to manually move some of these points each time as well. So that's something you might need to bear in mind if you don't have a very simple straight edge going past the text. And if you zoom in on your effects controls, you'll see each of these little keyframes is a different mask you've drawn. So I'll just go forward in the timeline and I'll draw a really rough mask just to show you how this works. So if I go to here and just pull this in and then go again, pull it across, you'll get a rough idea of how this is revealing the text behind the bikers. Obviously you want to do a neater job than this, but this is the gist of the effect. So I've just finished this sequence now and we can take a look at how that looks. And it's looking pretty smooth. And if we go through the mask, if there's any points during this animation that you aren't happy with and things are not as neat as they need to be, you can come in and there's nothing stopping you just grabbing a point and just moving it. For this sequence, I had the mask feather set at two pixels because they are moving quite slowly, so we don't really need much. But if you go back to the bollard sequence and zoom in, you'll notice that there's some motion blur on the bollard itself on the edge. And adding a 20 percent feather just made things look a lot more realistic because that's just way too sharp compared to the the blur on the bollard and you'll notice that looks a lot better once it's had that effect added with a shot like this that's designed to be a closing frame it might be a nice touch to slowly blur the background as they get in the distance and that'll give your text or logo a little bit more prominence so to do this what you want to do is go to your effects window and just search gaussian blur drag that onto your footage layer, and then just as they finish revealing, we'll start animating this. So hit the stopwatch for zero, go forward a little bit, and maybe add a 20% blur. And this will just add a nice little subtle effect that will give your logo that little bit more of a pop at the end. If you found this Premiere Pro tutorial helpful, it'd really help me out if you could leave a like on the video. If you're interested in more tutorials like this, as well as some free Premiere Pro assets that I'm releasing soon, feel free to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.